The gentleman from Ireland, Mr. Hope. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, it's an election year, and I know you're all aware of that. We've seen the bills floating around. But my, my constituents aren't all, all unlike your constituents, Mr. Speaker, and why they send us here. They, they send us all here to solve problems. And one problem that we've been talking about for a few years now is providing health care insurance for our poorest Virginians. And that's the problem. I don't want to talk about Medicaid expansion. I don't want to talk about the Affordable Care Act. I don't want to talk about audits. I don't want to talk about how you pay for it. I want to talk about a problem that faces your constituents and my constituents. The poorest of Virginians are your friends, your neighbors. One in five of your constituents in rural parts of our state are uninsured. Walk down the street, but you see five people. One of those families is just one accident or one illness away from financial ruin, financial bankruptcy. And that affects all of our lives. And part of the problem that I'm talking about is solving this, this question of how do you provide coverage to those poor Virginians. Part of the problem from that is that we're being taxed two and three times by doing nothing. So you are well aware the Affordable Care Act puts in taxes for individuals at $200,000 or families $250,000. We're paying taxes that are going to Washington that aren't coming back. Also, we all know that our premiums are going up, and I've heard a lot of discussion over the years about how premiums have started to rise, co-pays have gone up. Really, the fact of the matter is, is premiums have been going up for the last 15 years, even before the Affordable Care Act. In fact, the Washington Post uh, fact-checker uh, Glenn Kessler had, a, in fact, a story in the Post today where Kaiser analyzed the growth of premiums. And in the past five years, from 2009 to 2014, so keep in mind, in 2009 is when the Affordable Care Act was signed into law, the increase has been 26% compared to 34% in the preceding five year. Put another way, if you want to compare presidents, over the Obama's administration, the first five years was a 26% increase compared to a 66% increase in the first five years of George W. Bush's presidency. So we've been dealing with higher co-pays, but I would tell you that they keep going up by us doing nothing. That's another problem that we have to deal with. The gentleman from Suffolk, our appropriations chair, will, will have a better idea of what this is, but we spend about $200 million extra for prison health care, for mental health, for indigent care, that if we, if we decided to expand Medicaid, we could use that for other purposes. And I think people have other ideas of where we could put that money. But this question, solving this question of the uninsured, and that is the question, our poorest Virginians, people that are one accident or illness away from bankruptcy, how do we solve that problem? Republicans and Democrats should be trying to tackle this issue together because that's why our constituents send us here. Indiana's Governor Mike Pence, Tennessee's Governor Bill Haslam, Utah's Governor Gary Herbert, Wyoming's Governor Matt Mead, Ohio's Governor John Kasich. All these individuals are Republicans. They've all come up with a solution to solve their problem of how they provide coverage and access to their poorest of the poor. That's the question that we all should be debating, not whether you expand Medicaid, not whether you embrace Obamacare, not, not whether you, you ex expand or how you do it. You talk about solving that problem. Now, Governor McAuliffe has done the best that he can under the law to expand health care. And we hear reports under, under his governor's access plan where he's provided 20,000 people with serious mental illness health care. We're hearing reports that we might be rolling back from that. Mr. Speaker, that would be a tragedy. That would be a tragedy that we would try to go in the opposite direction of what our voters send us here to solve. So, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, let's this year resolve to put people over politics. Let's hold ourselves accountable, and let's solve this problem of the uninsured. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.